And we use the different kinds of formal practice, particular methods uh, to support concentration, the bringing attention to the footsteps as we do walking meditation, the feet meeting the ground. Mindfulness of breathing, the flow of the breath as we sit. The purpose of these exercises is to help ground the attention here in this present reality, this moment. The ongoing effort to sustain mindfulness through eating, coming and going, standing up, sitting down, carrying out our various work tasks. All of these efforts are towards sustaining a clarity of attention here in this present moment. We don't pay attention to the breath in order to fixate upon the breath. It's a means to an end. It's a tool that we use to help establish a quality of steady, open, unbiased awareness. As the mind becomes a little more quiet, steady, stable, It becomes somewhat easier to open the attention, keeping it receptive, spacious, alert, without using a particular concentration object. This is the purpose of the particular exercises or focal points like the breath or the footsteps is to support the establishment of a clear and open awareness a mindful attention to the present that's what it's for and to the extent that it's possible and this is the, the aim of the, the efforts that, that we make to establish a strong, clear, receptive awareness, to be that very knowing, spacious quality that in each moment receives the patterns of experience, hearing, feeling, remembering, thinking, smelling, tasting, touching, being that open, spacious awareness that receives all experience, knows it, and lets it go.
So during the day, as we apply ourselves to the formal practice and the development, the ongoing sustaining of mindful awareness, incline the the mind towards this quality of, of open, unbiased, non-discriminating awareness that receives the pleasant, the painful, the neutral, the liked, the, the disliked, the familiar, the unfamiliar, being that, that knowing space that receives all experience, knows it and lets it go. When you see the mind grasping, caught up, flowing into that, in that direction, into that particular object. Then we use the reflections to ask, is this changing? Is this ownable? Is this really a hundred percent satisfying? Will this make me happy forever? Can this truly be owned? And in that inquiry, in that reflection, then the grasping ceases, the, the outflow stops. Now, along with um, these particular methods that we've been speaking about so far, mindfulness of breathing or mindful walking and so on, there are many other objects, different methods we can use to help key the attention into this present reality. Now, one of these uh, alternative objects or methods is to develop what is called inner listening, listening to the inner sound. If you pay attention to the faculty of hearing, see if you can discern in the background a, a continuous, subtle, high-pitched 
ringing tone, like a, a white noise in the background of your hearing. For some people it's uh, this is not apparent or it's difficult to discern, but for, for many, for others it's, it's something that is not difficult to pick up, to perceive. So this inner sound, this continuous high-pitched ringing tone, like a subtle white noise, we can use the presence of this sound, so known as a nada, in Sanskrit, the, the presence of this inner sound can be used as a meditation object. You can pay attention to it. Use it just as we use the presence of the breath. It doesn't begin or end. It's ever-present. It's non-personal. So we can develop this as a reference point listening to the inner sound, both as we sit and carry out the formal meditation here in the hall, or if you develop it in a, a strong and consistent way, you can notice it as you're doing walking meditation, even as you're going about your daily tasks, eating, lying down to rest. It's always here. So for some people this can be a, uh, another helpful support for mindful awareness, helping to remind us to be awake, to pay attention. Now see if you can discern this inner sound, there's no need to theorize about it or worry about it or feel that you're a, a failure if you can't hear it. But if it's discernible, and bring attention to that. Listen. Just to let the, the presence of that sound, that inner vibration, fill the, the space of awareness. Notice how that even though you, you can hear the sound of my voice, the nada, the inner sound is going on in the background. Or if we hear a pigeon, sound of a plane, the inner sound still persists, it's still there like a, a backdrop of all experience. For some people it's a very obvious presence. For others it's impossible to, to discern. Nothing is apparent, either as a sound or as a physical sensation or, or anything. So if that's the case, if there's nothing that you can perceive of this 
it's not apparent at all, then don't worry. That's just the the way things are arranged, how you're made up. We just use the the feeling of the breath, or the posture of the body, as reference points. But if it is discernible, if it's a a quality that you can perceive, and this is a, another support for for mindfulness and awareness. Encouraging the quality of wakefulness, alertness. Again, we don't have to theorize what it might be or what to call it. We can simply use its presence, its nature, as a way to help us develop uh, the most skillful attitude of attention, openness. unentangled participating in this moment. <laughs> 